we're, the last session is going to focus on the European Atlas of Access to Myeloma Treatment. It's uh, one of the um, biggest and most important programs, as you know, we have in MPE. And, uh, and probably many of the things that I'll be talking about, you'll already know. Um, however, I'll try to give also an update on what has been happening since the last AGM, when we had an update on this. And we'll also have two of the pilot participants of the ATLAS coaching program um, here with us, uh, speaking about their experience and, and what, they, what they took with them and, and how we can maybe improve the, the program in, in the coming years. Um, so as you know, myeloma and the myeloma patient community, as the disease, the community as well, is very heterogeneous. Um, and, and that is both an opportunity and a challenge. Um, we have different challenges in each of the countries, some, some of them common at a European level, but mostly challenges that are very different in, in, in countries, different priorities. Um, also different, different levels of resources um, to actually do something about it and skills in the countries and in the organizations. We also have different health systems and so on and so forth. So the list is quite long of how different we are. And, and therefore it is very important to tackle access or any program related to access to treatment um, keeping in mind how different we are and how different the needs are that we have. However, it's also a fact that we have different roles in advocacy. So we have groups that um, focus mainly on support and information for patients. So that would be the level that is in touch, in constant touch with patients, support the individual patient, provide patient information. We then have a layer of advocates who are active in the health policy field. Um, for advocating for better um, uh, regulations, for better policies, and for better access to treatment. We then have another layer which is um, trying to um, make research more patient-centric and have, have an influence in research in order to have be better clinical trials, to accelerate research and to um, make it more efficient. Um, they collaborate internationally with clinicians and with industry, and they help defining research priorities and, and conduct. Um, however, you know, when, when we look back at the last you know, decade um, in myeloma ad advocacy, uh, and, and also the myeloma field, we've seen you know, the presentation of Alfonso this afternoon, how incredibly successful the clinical side has been, how many you know, new compounds, new drugs we have on the market, how the pipeline looks as if it were to explode. That's wonderful. But how come that you know, despite all these advances from a clinical point of view, we haven't really reached or achieved what we thought or wanted to achieve at an advocacy level? How come that you know, we still have access issues to treatment in every single country of Europe. Um, that is, you know, one of the questions that the ATLAS tries to, um, tries to address. And it might be worth thinking about, you know, what are the issues that we might have, you know, done, not, made, not done wrong, but maybe approached from, from a, a perspective that uh, could be improved. And it is, possible that maybe we focused along the last you know years and decades too much on emotions opinions which are very important but they need to be in the right balance with evidence that you bring to the table when you speak to stakeholders so you need to show the human side of this horrible disease what it does to single patients that live with that disease but in order for stakeholders to take a decision, they need evidence. It, it is not enough if they feel for you. Another thing that you know, we might want to think about is that um, are, we, um, are we really targeting the right stakeholders? Is it, you know, are we focusing on the right stakeholder nationally and, and 
even at, at a European level? Or even are we maybe tackling the European Commission when we should be tackling maybe the Ministry of Health? Those are all questions that we also need to ask ourselves. And the other one that came to my mind and that we've seen throughout you know, the last couple of years of uh, development of the Atlas is what kind of channels are we actually using to reach those stakeholders? Are we you know, using emotional ways? Are we approaching this from a strategic point of view? What, what is the strategy we all have, which will be very different in each of the countries? And for MPE, it will be also different at a European level than it will be for you at a national level. So those are questions that we need to ask. And others are also, is it maybe that we've been using strategies, the same strategies that we saw from another patient organization in, in another country that worked very well and that doesn't work for us? that we maybe need to tailor that, maybe individualize that a little bit and adapt it to our own needs, our own contacts. Um, do we have the right skills? And not only, you know, me as Ananda advocating at a European level, I would think, okay, within my team, do I have the knowledge I need in order to achieve what we need to achieve for patients? And the same question should be asked at a national level. Do I have employees or volunteers in my team that can help me achieve what I need to achieve? Do we have a strategy? Do we have the resources to be successful? And we could go on, you know, the whole afternoon around those questions. Um, duplicating efforts is another one that we, we often have. Um, so that is that. But when speaking about the ATLAS and what the ATLAS tries to tackle is um, access from a very broad perspective. Because access is not just about pricing. We've heard a lot about pricing this afternoon. It is a big issue. But within countries, when analyzing, we've seen many other factors that have an influence on access. <coughs> For instance, patients or doctors don't know about treatments. They don't read the clinical guidelines. We've even had complaints about doctors not speaking English and not being able to read the abstracts um, you know, from conferences like EHA or ASH. Um, lack of specific expertise and training in, in countries, we've heard complaints about that. Patients that do not get the diagnostics they need or that patients are diagnosed way too late is a problem as well. <coughs> Inadequate referral systems <coughs> where we see um, that patients, the referral from the GP takes way too long until they get to the hematologist, which means very often a, sen a death sentence for many of them. A, fail a failure of collaboration within medical disciplines. And if you go into the unapproved drugs, you have issues like that simply trials are not available. In the, in the country where the patient lives. So if you don't have an approved drug and you don't have a trial, what do you do as a patient? You just die or you uh, go to industry and ask for mercy? So all of those are not options that are you know, very satisfactory for us as patient advocates and we, where we need to do something. Um, or patients are not told about trials that do exist. We have evidence showing that. Patients are available in countries, but that patients do not know about them because maybe doctors are reluctant of sending patients over to another center where that trial is happening. Um, maybe there's no compassionate use program. What happens when we have approved drugs? Um, well, sometimes you have approved drugs that are not accessible yet, which, you know, they go through the EMA, they get approved, but then it takes sometimes years or even decades, as we've heard before, until that gets into the access to the patient through the reimbursement system of, of those countries. And then we have obviously uh, other issues like shortages and so on and so forth. Those are many challenges, but for, for the ATLAS as such is to take all those challenges and try to you know, create opportunities out of them, try to enhance collaboration, try to become involved in research and, and the planning, have common goals in order to avoid duplication of efforts. You know, 
try to create more skills and capability capacity among the patient advocates that advocate for access. And, and one of the key issues is creating evidence, which is just not available. So for us as advocates to go to the authorities and present hardcore evidence for them to take an informed decision about what they do. So the essential elements of the ATLAS, <clears throat> we um, figured were evidence, strategy, and skills. And evidence, <clears throat> you would include clinical evidence, the perceived barriers, which you know we call them perceived because they were based on a survey, but actually they're not perceived because if you experience them in your country, they're actually there. So, um, and then data on healthcare systems. How does my system work? Whom do I need to contact? What kind of stakeholders do we have? And so on and so forth. Um, then specific skills um, that are needed for patient advocates and, and organizations to um, tackle those issues. Um, training with, uh, with a specialized um, group of, um, of the University, Autonomous University of Barcelona, capacity building, mentoring, and one-on-one -on -one really coaching. And the creation of a strategy, because it's worth nothing if you have evidence and you have the skills, but you don't have a strategy and you don't know where you're going. And that's um, um, often the case. <clears throat> so it is not only about having evidence. As we saw before, it's one of the, the key elements. But if you do not make that evidence accessible, it is also useless. So what we've done is we've created a platform where we put all that data together, and, um, and we also have the coaching program platform, which we'll talk about later on that platform, where every one of you can get hold of the information that you require. If you do not find the information that you're looking for, you should contact us. Because you know our duty in the MPE team is to find that information and put it on the website if it's relevant for you for doing your work. And since reality is dynamic, what this tool does is you know, adapt to the reality that you show. So we've created based on, <coughs> sorry, based on a hypothesis that we had regarding access. But that hypothesis can change. So if you feel that you know, the data that we're collecting, some bits of it is useless, we'll take that out. And <coughs> anything missing, then we would um, do our best to get that information, and we've done that in the past. So that will be updated and collected regularly. Um, this is how the website looks. In case you've never been on it, it's mpeurope.org slash atlas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you can see that you know the tendency of this platform is to go from a purely pa you know, based platform to an observatory, to really have something that is dynamic and adapts to the needs of um, our members, and uh, and where you can you know find your way through the through the jungle of access to treatment. This is one of the examples of the kind of data that you might get out of it, where um, you see the perceived barriers <clears throat> on the horizontal one. And you have on the right side, um, on the left side, the, the country list. And on the right side, you would have uh, self-declared needs and health uh, care expenditure. So what you see here, and you know, it's, it's very small, but you can go online and, and download it if you want to, is some kind of powerful data with which you can go to stakeholders and say, OK, so how come you know, my neighbor who has you know, the same self-declared needs and the same GDP, how come they have access and we don't? And this is one of, the, um, one of the key elements of the coaching program. It is very similar to what a project plan management uh, tool might be. Um, it takes you, it helps you to plan. So you need to really identify the priorities. We'll have afterwards Christina and Lucica talking about that. What are the priorities you have in your country? What are the resources you have? Whom do you know? Whom do you not know? How, what is the timeline you have in mind in order to achieve what you have in mind? 
and, um, and it goes around creating a whole strategy for you to, um, to get to where you want to. And that can vary. It's not, uh, it's not something that is um, you know, rigid, um, where you, you would say, you know, I want to change the whole system. It can go from you know, wanting to get one drug into the reimbursement system or wanting to have it reimbursed to um, even something um, like contacting a certain stakeholder in the country. So it's really adaptable to whatever you want to do. And so what, what does the coaching program provide? Um, it provides a, a strong base of evidence, it builds skills, and it helps to um, produce um, a strategy and also achieve with that strategy, holding your hand basically, to really achieve that. Um, so what we did as a pilot with these two members for six week, uh, for six months, and um, and we helped, we tried first to help them identify what the priorities were, and then help them create the strategy they wanted and then you know, follow them throughout the implementation of that strategy, which obviously some of it is not, you know, not fulfilled yet because uh, many, um, many objectives you might have in the healthcare field are you know, uh, pretty much long-term um, objectives. So, um, so you had online tool, webinars, individual support, provided you know, information and materials, and if there was a need for a specific expertise missing, then we would put that person in touch with, with that expert. And um, the methodology, a bit of the boring part, but I think also important to just mention that it was based on a methodology that focuses on peer-to-peer -peer learning, common goals, and really um, monitoring and benchmarking. And, and some of you might think, you know, why is this relevant at all for patients and myeloma patients? And, um, and I think it's worth, you know, taking a moment to think about it because it obviously is a high level policy and it comes back to the layers that we talked about at the beginning of what each of the groups of your groups do. What do you focus on? Um, but in any case, it is our duty as patient advocates to work as hard as we can so that every myeloma patient, no matter where that patient lives, gets timely access to the treatment he or she needs. And that is something we all have in common. And how you get there and what channels you use and at what level you do that is, it doesn't really matter. The other thing that for me is important at this stage when talking about why it is relevant to myeloma patients is that we, we need to stop focusing only on opinions and complaints. We need to have a healthy balance of both evidence and anecdotes or emotions in order to move the system. And I you know, it's something that MP has been working for, but I, I truly believe is that with evidence, the right set of skills and the right strategies, um, you can get there and we can get there together with other stakeholders. So that's basically all I wanted to say. And I'll um, leave the floor to, I think, Christina, who's next to talk about what her experience was um, in the coaching program during the pilot time. And at the end, I mean, we'll have probably um, 10 to 15 minute talk from Christina and from Lucica. And after that, what we'd like to do is to focus a bit on what your needs are and how we can develop this further the coming year until the next AGM. So we'll hand out a small, you know, survey, um, a one-pager, I think, <clears throat> um, where we want you to write down what kind of evidence you need to do your job, um, and a couple of questions more. 
and you also have a summary of the pilot results um, in what Anna will, uh, will give to you at the end of the session. Okay, I'm very thankful to be a part of this pilot, Atlas Coaching Pilot Program. Um, it gave me new experience uh, on the field of project manager uh, management and the wider view on the advocacy. Um, where I can go? Further on. I would like to go on the next slide. Okay. Um, why is the program so useful? I can say uh, because it's quite simple tool. Uh, for effective management of various types of the projects, especially for the advocacy projects. Um, the program teaches us, um, uh, teaches us and upgrades existing knowledge and skills on how to solve complex problem in a simple way in nine steps, as Ananda already said. In particular, the program is useful for the most demanding projects, such as, for example, uh, patient rights and interest ad advocacy, uh, and then uh, in the field of health policy, ensure, uh, in the field of ensuring access to new diagnostic procedures and novel therapies. Um, the program also enables the management uh, of several projects at the same time, uh, thus providing enhanced effectiveness of work in less time. And since the program is transparent and easy to use, it is uh, suitable for both the beginners and experienced patient advocates. Uh, and what is also important, access free of charge for all users represents its significant added value. Um, and what have I learned, or what me and Lucica learned? Um, the program teaches us, uh, the teaches users uh, to think in a systematic, analytical, and through way, uh, and, teaches us, uh, and teaches us how to approach to the problem analysis, and how to approach to the preparation, implementation, um, and management of the project and how to uh, systematically and critically uh, analyze the problem and critically assess own abilities and ability of the organization in relation to the work on the project. Um, it requires a lot of weighty reflection and concrete information from us, from the user. Uh, and uh, what is also important, the program guides the user towards the systematic preparation of solution and offers the project Im implementation plan to the user. Um, and what have I achieved? First, I have to explain something. Um, the patient organization which I, represent, which I represent, this is Slovenian Lymphoma and Leukemia Patient Association, has been quite successful in the um, field of patient advocacy for many years. We successfully cooperate with Slovenian uh, health policy as well as health professionals and of course with the patients. And what is also important, Slovenian health policy, for instance, increasingly involves patients advocates in various working groups and projects. Um, it recognized us and considered us as, important, as important, important partners in the preparation of health policies. So uh, we are quite successful with the project um, uh, in the relation with our health policy. Access uh, to what is also important that access to new therapies in Slovenia I can say is quite good, is good. 
uh, and which is also the result of the situation in our country and uh, long-standing activities of many Slovenian patient groups, patient organizations in the area of advocacy. Uh, and what is also important to say is that I have been working on various projects, also like atlases, uh, for more than 20 years. Therefore, the project management method, as foreseen by the Atlas Coaching Program, is quite familiar to me. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I was delighted to get involved in this program and tasted it with the three challenges faced by patients with multiple myeloma in Slovenia. And these three, um, three um, challenges are how to uh, reduce delays in diagnosing, in diagnosing my, multiple myeloma in Slovenia, and then how to improve the comprehensive treatment and rehabilitation during and after the treatment. It means psychological support, nutrition support, for example. And the third is how to improve patient involvement in clinical trials. Because um, in Slovenia, we almost uh, uh, don't have any um, trials because we are a small country. Uh, and um, this is quite a problem for our patients. Uh, how has my advocacy strategy, uh, strategy changed after this uh, pilot program? Uh, the, strat the strategy of our organizations, which we used to solve these three challenges, bef uh, challenges before the start of the pilot program, did not change so significantly after the program was completed. So um, it was almost the same like we um, prepared before. But it is very important to point out that the program helped me to contemplate the causes and uh, those responsible for the situation and more precisely prepare concrete steps to improve the situation. So uh, uh, I benefit, um, uh, of course I benefit from the program. Um, what kind of help am I requesting from MPE? I've ha I have got a lot of uh, help through the pilot program uh, from Ananda, Alfonso, from Marta Balester from the agency. They provided me all assistance if I needed. Uh, they guide us, Lucica and me, through many webinars and video conferences uh, and peer-to-peer -peer communications with a lot of professionalism, enthusiasm, and uh, the desire to succeed together and give this important tool confirmation and valuability. So I think that we did a great work. Atlas coaching program is really um, great. I suggest it to all of you to check it out, to, um, to try to do a project uh, through this uh, program. So um, all the best for the program in the future. Hello, um, I'm Logica Nitsu. I'm representing the uh, Patients Association SOS Myeloma from Romania. And uh, I would like to start uh, by thanking to Ananda, Alfonso, uh, Marta, and uh, MPE team for giving to us as a newly created association in 2015 to participate to this uh, coaching program that provided us with a very good tool to, um, which helped us to organize better our efforts uh, in, uh, in order to militate for uh, patient rights in, in Romania. Uh, why was this uh, program useful for us? Um, this uh, program, as I said, provided us a toolkit to help us to uh, better list uh, uh, the issues we were confronted with as uh, myeloma patients in Romania, and then helped us to identify the root causes of these uh, issues. 
Uh, starting from this, uh, it helped us to establish uh, an action plan and uh, to list our main uh, objectives to be tackled uh, towards authorities, uh, I would say both at national level and uh, at the European level. Um, also, it helped us to uh, better understand who are our stakeholders and uh, Sorry for that. And uh, um, to even start planning a meeting with them. Uh, and I would say that the program was also useful for us because uh, it kind of forced us to, to educate ourselves related to uh, existing uh, laws at national level. Uh, European regulations in the field uh, and uh, guidelines from different uh, medical agency in, New York, uh, in Europe. For us, being a newly created association, this was very, very, very helpful. Um, so maybe someone could help me with this. I don't know what is happening. Okay, so what have I learned? Sorry, <laughs> it's a technical issue. But it's between different messages. There were messages that said. So, as I said uh, already, uh, the tool helped us to uh, better organize ourselves to synthesize our thoughts and to obtain a wider and clearer picture of the issues we encounter in Romania. Uh, it also uh, helped us to build an action plan and, as I said, provided a very good tool uh, to evaluate the potential of our actions and uh, of our advocacy message. And uh, I found it very, very important, the fact that at the end of, uh, of the accessing all the steps uh, in, uh, in the program, I could say we uh, have been able to uh, have the picture of our advocacy roadmap, which was very important for us as a young association. What have we achieved? Uh, we learned to have a better dialogue and a better collaboration with uh, different stakeholders, pharma companies uh, and authorities, and uh, to better address our concerns related to the access of the right treatments for the patients, uh, uh, especially in the hospitals. Uh, also, we uh, learned to formulate clearer messages to be uh, transmitted to all stakeholders. Uh, in order to have um, available for Romanian patients also the latest modern and innovative uh, treatments. Um, at a personal level, and as Christina also mentioned, uh, this uh, helped us a lot to uh, improve the, the, our capacity and our advocacy skills. Uh, to create uh, the roadmap and to, uh, to write our project uh, plan in order to be able to, to solve uh, and to find a solution to the issues we were confronted with. And uh, um, also we consider that this uh, program helped us to provided us with a very good toolkit to uh, establish our uh, advocacy strategy and to map all the stakeholders to be involved in the process. What kind of help are we requesting from MPE? As it has already been stated, uh, we'd like to, to see uh, MPE uh, to become a voice for all associations, member, uh, and uh, uh, to become a voice both at Eastern uh, level and Western uh, countries level. Um, 
and uh, to represent us or to work together in order to represent the patients better in front of European health authorities and in front of relevant European pharma companies. Uh, it also has been stated earlier this. I mean, I think it's a very good thing if we would be able uh, for a group of countries, and here I'm pointing out especially the eastern countries where the situation is not so, how to say, bright in terms of access to treatments. So to have a group of countries of representative from these countries to sit together at a table with pharma companies and uh, authorities in order to, to have a common uh, language and to have a common message uh, and uh, what can I say? I congratulate the team who put in place this project. It was very useful for us, and I hope all of you uh, will find it uh, very useful in your uh, activity and uh, all the initiative you will have from now on. So thank you very much.